Hello, and welcome to the ZRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 155, Transmail Gets Canceled, recorded on Friday, July 16th, 2021, from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. We will start as we always do with our upcoming events. We are going to be doing next Tuesday, July 20th, a Zoho subscriptions full product tutorial. It's going to be good. Tyler and I built most of it yesterday. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Zoho subscriptions, I think you will enjoy it. And you can just head over to zanata.com events. That's right. We moved it. It's no longer over at CRM Zen. Matter of fact, all of CRM Zen has made its way over to Zanata. It's got its own little section now. Um, but if you go to uh, zanata.com slash events, you can go there. You can register for any of our webinars or any of the other Zoho webinars. Um, it's funny. We have, you know, our, we've always used this overview and best practices. And I noticed that uh, now Zoho is taking that uh, overview and best practices <laughs> name. And actually we're renaming these, right? Full product tutorials for some of these now, or yeah, yep. yeah they can have them we're moving on, going our own direction. <laughs> uh, all righty. So Tyler, that brings us straight on into the news and we'll start with another new product, but it's not. <laughs> um, uh, Zoho actually officially launched data prep this week. I want to say it went into uh, beta, what, a couple months ago? Uh, yeah, about a month, month and a half ago, give or take, it went into beta. It's it's kind of almost to think about it like an add-on for Zoho Analytics. Um, it's kind of a place where you might do some of your data prep work before you route it into the analytics suite. If you're trying to manage your storage a little bit in analytics, you might take, you know, if you if you've got two different data tables and you're always going to want to join them before you run any reports, Right, you could run those through data prep, do a basic join there, and then connect that into analytics. So it's kind of like a self-service tool for doing some of those, you know, data manipulations that analytics is not really built to do. You know, like you can clean up some values in analytics using formula fields or this, that, and the other, but um, it's kind of going to be a middle layer if you do have some uh, data manipulation you want to do before running any of your reports. Have you played around with this since the kind of initial beta where you were? just poking on it. Yeah, I have. It's, I mean, it's definitely useful, um, especially if you're connecting this to a system that you kind of want it to route in automatically, but it has certain issues, you know, like maybe you're pulling from a data source and the address is all in one column, right? So every single time before you bring that into analytics, you just want to go through data prep and split that address, right? Or maybe you just Got want it. to go through data prep and proper case everything, you know? So it's kind of a little middle layer that just cleans things up on your behalf. Interesting. Yeah, no, it looks like they'll go up to 250 million rows if you've got that. Uh, do you still have, don't you have to break them down though into smaller chunks or is that not the case? Well, you can you can route it all into data prep. Um, the last time I played with it, it doesn't take the full spreadsheet for you to review as you're do doing the cleanup. It pulls a sample of it. Got it. Um, but you can still route everything through and then connect analytics to the full data. All righty. And that is data prep. And now we'll move on to something near and dear to your heart. Zoho has launched Analytics 5.0. I uh, didn't know the previous one was 4.0. I'm always uh, <laughs> I love when we get these dot releases I never knew existed. Uh, anyway, so I guess uh, Analytics 4.0 was November 2018. So we're two and a half years plus in the making here. Um, I didn't, when I looked at it, Tyler, and I am a analytics novice, I didn't notice any kind of major graphical changes to it. So is it mostly just a lot of new features? Yeah, there's there's a couple things on it. So first, um, they did roll out a couple new features across analytics. Um, one that I do kind of like, and I, I'm seeing it pop up slowly but surely in the client's accounts, is uh, dashboard tabs. Um, so basically, this is just the ability to have one dashboard where you're kind of flicking through multiple different views or... Uh, groups of reports. So maybe if you had, you know, a master dashboard that was your pipeline management dashboard, you might have a tab for inbound marketing. You might have a tab for lead management, and then you might have a tab for deal management because these all might pull from different sources and they might matter more to different people, but you still want to have them on one top-down dashboard environment. It's really just a usage thing. Functionally, that doesn't make, you could always just have three different dashboards, you know, pipeline dash marketing, pipeline dash leads, you know. Uh, but for just a quick view and kind of flipping around, that is a nice function. 
Um, data prep is also part of Analytics 5.0, kind of as a, a suite of applications. Um, they've built out some additional opportunities for embedding analytics. So it's kind of a new environment if you wanted to take a report and embed it into like an app that you're building or something like that. Uh, they're building out a lot more with Zia within here, trying to make it more contextually intelligent, which they're making progress on things like that with machine learning and, and recognizing text. They just need more and more data to make that work better and better. Um, one thing with this, though, that is kind of just tacked on near the bottom here that I actually think is really cool is that they're opening up more ability for people to create marketplace apps for uh, analytics. So one thing about that that's pretty exciting is previously all of the data connectors for analytics were built by the Zoho Analytics team. But what it seems like is now people could actually go ahead and build their own connector into Zoho Analytics. Um, that just kind of opens up the door for more different applications, you know, being able to tie into Zoho. Um, so the more the merrier there. Uh, and I think democratizing that a little bit, kind of letting people build their own plugins for it takes that off of Zoho so that they don't have to be the one to build every single connection that analytics is ever going to have. So I could see that yeah. becoming more and more of a, a value add. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I mean, we're, I got a question here from Troy. So, you know, Troy, we actually use Zoho Analytics for pretty much everything, but you know, I'm finding more and more, it seems like almost every single client, it's just easier for us to pull their stuff into analytics and give them what they want there. Um, Cause you can never get everything you want out of just the canned reports that are in most of the base apps. I mean, at least most people can't, there's just, mm -hmm. also, there's usually just this one or two little things. And if they want to see it, it's just better to move it up into analytics. Yep. Um, and I, I mean, we're even doing some crazy stuff around synchronizing stuff into campaigns now using so analytics. So, uh, anyway, I'm glad to see him improve this. I, the one thing I'd love to see though, is the, it seems to me the general, and I don't know, I've only played around with three or four BI tools, but like the graphical interface, the user interface in like Tableau and Power BI, mm -hmm. they're just beautiful. You know, it's just got a really nice and it's just, and uh, analytics is pretty utilitarian. I thought this was going to be a major overhaul. It's nice though. It's 60 yeah, plus it's, features. So. It's, it's one of those things where once you know how the UI for creating charts and pivots and all those work, it's, yeah. it's totally workable and useful, but it's just a lot. Like when you pull up the tab yeah. to create a new report, you've got this massive column of every single field in any data table inside of analytics, right? And you've got just a lot of white space and small little places to drag in the values. It's, it can be a little bit daunting to use. All right. All right. Let's go to Zoho Sign. This is nice. They, uh, the headline is they've in, added enhanced document collaboration. So yes, you actually can share documents for collaboration. I don't care about that. What I care about is that you can now share a template <laughs> for reuse. So it used to be that if an individual created a template, it was their template and no one else can use it. So now you can share templates. Two nice features that uh, I think are really, you know, enhancing Zoho Sign. Yeah. I think they they do need, uh, they need some proper user management though. These are good steps Correct. to work around the admin user breakdown, but really, I mean, we need some more, uh, more diverse profiles that we can uh, roll out here and sign. Cause really right now it's just, you have admin who can do every single thing. And then you have users who can do very little things. Um, they can so just probably needs see to be their some own type documents. Of, yeah. Yeah. It needs to be yeah, a middle ground they're, they're, somewhere, but this will help. We've talked about that. Yeah. The granularity is missing, right? From user, yeah. user control. Well, and so many of their apps do it so well, you know, you go to CRM, you go to books, you can customize, you can view this, you can edit this, you can only create these, you know, you can really go crazy in there. Um, I'm sure it's on their radar for Zoho sign as well. Yeah. All righty. And then uh, Transmail has completed its application reassignment therapy and is now Zepto Mail. <laughs> uh, that was the first name they chose. Or the, the, this is the last one, actually. There was also Groucho Mail and Harpo Mail. I know it's Zeppo, guys, but I, could, I had to go with it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, all the Grouch brothers were, all <laughs> were in there. They're the Marx brothers were in there at one point in time. Anyway, uh, Look, all seriousness here, when Transmail came out, a lot of us went, hmm, interesting name. 
not so sure it's a great name for a lot of reasons. And uh, about three years later now, Zoho's kind of agreed uh, and they just don't want it to be misinterpreted. It was trans, you know, it was basically transportation layers. So trans male, but now they've named it Zepto male, which for those of you who wanted to know is the uh, shortest unit of time ever measured, which refers to a trillionth of a billionth of a second. So Zepto male better be fast. That's all I got to <laughs> say. I don't know. Yeah, this is a uh, kind of saw this one coming a little bit as they rolled this product out to uh, kind of wider use. A little background story too. I mean, Zepto Mail or Transmail has always been what Zoho has used behind the scenes to send out their own transactional mails. So CRM uses this, People uses this, Books uses this, all kind of as the back end engine. Uh, they rolled it out for you know more consumer facing use. So you know, make an API call that sends an email uh, a little while back, and I think maybe little more attention on it in that way highlighted for them that maybe it needed a rebrand. Yes. Did we say trans mail was canceled? <laughs> it was. <laughs> All righty. And moving right along, we have got Zoho People July newsletter. I always bring this one up. Love the Zoho People newsletter. And if you're a Zoho People user, it's out. So Go ahead and grab yourself the Zoho People newsletter. Really, um, not a lot here that uh, we haven't already covered. They are going to have a webinar. We need to add this in on July 29th, introducing Zoho People Plus. Um, so anyway, this is where you find everything in the world of Zoho People. And Tyler, I'll tell you what, it seems like every week, the more and more companies that I'm talking to have moved to Zoho People, are using Zoho People. Um, it's really getting some serious adoption. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, we've talked about, Hey, it's got a lot of really deep menu structure and there's a lot there and you've got to go through, but you know, I'm hearing from, I, I guess a lot of HR suites are extremely convoluted in mm -hmm. their own right as well. It's yeah. just kind of the way it's just the nature of the beach beast, I guess. Um, so there's old people it's, uh, coming to a theater near you and go, go ahead and grab that newsletter. And then moving on, uh, Zoho people has also added a uh, leave grant. And this is a nice feature. Basically what this means and what, how, how you'd use leave grant is if you're trying to apply, or if you have an employee who wants to apply for leave, that's outside of a previously defined type of leave then they can submit a leave grant request, which then goes through an approval process and can then be approved or declined. You can decide if it's payable or non-payable, um, but really it's just a kind of more flexible or open-ended way to manage leave outside of like your strict company policies. Right. So if they're out of PTO, they've got other things. You need to give them an extension and this allows you to do it. Um, so it's nice, you know, inside of here and if you're in one of the states where Zoho payroll uh, is is in place, then that's going to be helpful as well. Um, so you know, because then it automatically goes into basically all of their payroll and their time cards and all of that as well. So anyway, very 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 nice. And then Zoho Social got some updates. Um, the big one here is you can now direct do direct messaging in Instagram mm -hmm. uh, directly from the Zoho Social app. Yeah, and that's a, that's a huge update. Um, this one, we've had people ask us for this before. And actually, interestingly, this the fact that this wasn't in social before was actually not Zoho's fault. Um, Instagram previously did not have an API to allow for this. They just recently rolled it out and they're kind of still doing it in phases. So I think right now, yeah, if you have 1,000 to 100,000 um followers on Instagram, you're in the group that currently is able to do this. They've opened up the messaging API in those cases. Um, but good on Zoho because Instagram did not make that update very long ago and they're already jumping on it and rolling this out. So kudos to the social team. Yeah. And then um, they've added alt text to images, which is nice. I, for some reason, I always thought that was still there. So uh, for the those people who are visually impaired. I mean, that's really one of the big reasons for alt text. If you've got a lot of accessibility options turned on on your PC, you can kind of hover over an image. And if the alt text is properly there, it will give them a description mm -hmm. um, uh, about that image and what they're looking at. So anyway, nice, nice continued improvement on Zoho Social. It's an app we talk about a lot. We like it a lot. We use it. Um, 
and like you said, a lot of times those limitations are not Zoho limitations. You know, yep. they, they don't have that ability to, to look up. So, I mean, you know, one of the big ones is on LinkedIn, you actually can't do the user lookup inside of Zoho Social. You can for Twitter and you can for Facebook, uh, but you can't, you know, in LinkedIn. So you actually need to, if you want to actually tag someone, you need to go into LinkedIn and directly create the post there. So, but that's not a Zoho thing. So, all right. And moving on, Zoho Click got some pricing changes. Bye bye free click. Um, and so now zero to 500 users is going to be $3 per user per month or annually $2.70 per user per month. So it looks like the free plans are going away on four days ago, <laughs> July 12th. <laughs> The belated PSA, so, if your click turned off four <laughs> days ago, here's why. <laughs> okay, when did this come out? This came out four days ago on the yeah, 12th. From July 12th. It happened. Got yeah. it. So drop the, they dropped the announcement on July 12th, and it happened on July 12th. So I guess if you're a free click user, you already know this. Um, did this pricing change for anyone else? I mean... Now, and it looks like here, this is mostly affecting new users. If we scroll down just a little bit, I think it may mention here got more of a grace period. If you're already part oh, of yeah. the unlimited plan, unlimited trial, uh, or if you're of course on Zoho one, this isn't going to affect your pricing in any way. Nice. All righty. And then moving on in Zoho sprints, you now have custom layouts and fields for meetings. Um, we don't really use sprints all that much. I think this already exists in projects, doesn't it? So this is just kind of a little catch up here, Tyler. Yep. Pretty much just adding a little bit more customization inside of, um, inside of sprints, but nothing too crazy. All right. And I swear we covered this, but they announced this a week ago as new news, but, uh, you can now add an Epic inside of Zoho sprints on the iOS mobile app. You know, maybe it was on, maybe it was only on Android, on Android before. before. Yeah, I, I think I so. I swear we covered this. Yeah, and now it's on iOS because we talked about this. So if you're using Sprints, just more functionality, the iOS app basically keeping pace with the desktop application as well. All right, and that's going to bring us to our implementation of the week. What do we got? Oh, yes, this is one it's that, here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, kudos to Josh. He, uh, he submitted this to help me understand what he did here to make this run. So this is an imp implementation that is just inside of the CRM. Uh, it's actually one that doesn't really require any code or anything too crazy. You know, oftentimes with these, we're hitting some API or running some crazy schedule or you know, building a query table. This one's really just a little functionality trick that a couple of us didn't know about that Josh was able to work out using the CRM email templates. So Kind of step one is inside of a certain, you know, a CRM record, whether it's an account, a contact, or a deal, you know, a lead, any of those records. Uh, you go ahead and add a URL field that you go that you will store a publicly shared image URL. Um, so in our case, when we did this, we just created some unlisted but public pages to go ahead and add certain screenshots or certain images that we wanted to merge into an email template. From there, you just go ahead and create a new email template inside the CRM and you add one of their image elements. And if you go ahead and actually grab the merge tag for that URL field and add it into the image element as just like, because when you, when you add one of those images, you can choose whether you want to display it from a URL or from an image, like an actual file. And as long as you put that merge tag for the image URL in there, it will actually embed it in line with the email, just visible when someone pulls it up. Um, it's also nice because you're then not including any files in your emails, uh, which will help you not get caught in spam. Kind of heavier file or attachment laden emails are just much more likely to get into a spam inbox. So we kind of just wanted to highlight this. There's a lot of different ways that you might implement this, um, but just the key is that if you do have a URL field inside of any old record and you drop in an image URL for it, you can just add that merge tag to a image field or an image value inside of a template and go ahead and send it out. 
Yeah, so this worked out. I do believe he did write a script around this, though. I thought he was doing something if they dropped it into a the work drive folder inside the contact. It would then it was going to grabbing that URL. I, I think so. Maybe, maybe not. No, um, this stuff is yeah. on a WP admin page. Actually, it's on like a Zanata. Is that what they did? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because you need so them to be uploaded. like you need it to be Accessible? just a URL to the raw image. Got it. Got it. So they basically took all these, what the use case for this was, we had a bunch of clients that we wanted to share some, their own private metrics with them. And so we basically ran the metric dashboard, took a screenshot of that, dropped into folder, got that URL. Um, and then we're able to send out a mass email where every single person had their own unique image, to, you know, talking about everything they had and all we kept, I think we kept all the statistics in there as well. So mm -hmm. um, this is the first time we've done it. I know we're looking at doing this. We're going to try to do it in campaigns. I don't know if we successfully tr did that yet or not. We've got yeah, one. We're still uh, poking around with it. You know, we know we can get the URL field in. That that won't be a problem. It's just if campaigns is going to do it nicely, like the CRM does with a clean right. little embed. Yeah, we're not certain yet. So anyway, we will see. All righty. And then moving on to this week's reads, we've got... Uh, Two actually, one is uh, the Zolt would only have one Zanata blog this week, so we'll do this week's reads. The first one is from over at Destination CRM, and it's here's why companies should really be busting down silos. One of my absolute favorite topics, Tyler. <laughs> um, if you aren't familiar in an organization, there are some theories that basically people should be siloed, so sales does not talk to marketing, you have these very you know, tight little groups. Uh, they work completely independently of any other groups. And in some cases, that is important, right? Uh, you need these people completely separated. You don't want them contaminated. You kind of just want them basically doing their mm -hmm. own thing. Uh, but I would say for 99% of the companies out there, um, silos are really bad, especially between sales, marketing, operating, all it's, across the whole organization. Uh, you gain a lot by basically having your teams collaborate with each other, work together with each other, and basically march to the beat of the same drummer. Yeah, I think it's one of those things probably has some trade-offs, you know, but you have to imagine that your product team being in the same room or in the same environment as your sales team would help the sales team understand the product and help the product team develop the best product to be sold, right? So you get a lot of these network benefits when people are sharing their own expertise and goals amongst each other. Yep. And then we have um, choosing the best desk software for your business. And we kind of talk about the main reasons what you want to look at when you are looking at help desk software. Talk about Freshdesk and Happy Fox, Crazy U, Solar Winds, Zoho Desk. Uh, we left Zendesk out of here, but uh, who knows? Why would you put the 800 pound gorilla in the article? But <laughs> anyway, uh, it does cover some of the things you'll want to look at when you are going ahead and choosing the desk software that's going to be right for you. And then that's going to bring us to our pick of the week. Um, this is a product called Hypercontext. And way back in the day, uh, we talked about this product. What did it used to be called? It was called Soapbox HQ. Soapbox HQ, right. So Soapbox HQ, uh, I just, it came back up and I haven't looked at it in over a year and a half. So what this does is it is a Chrome plugin specifically for your Google Calendar. And it allows you to create on the fly agendas that are permanent. Um, the nice thing about this now is that it creates these permanent workspaces you can create. So I can create a workspace called Brett and Tyler, and we've got our touch base meetings and the notes live there perpetually and they get closed off and you can actually assign something like, oh, this needs to be done. And it actually puts it on the calendar as a task that needs to be done on the calendar. Um, a lot of, they've really, really, really cleaned it up. I actually had a call with them this week to kind of talk a little bit about their roadmap and what, they, what they've got planned. Um, you're going to be able to actually rename your workspaces, which is something nice. Um, historically, if you wanted to invite someone outside your organization, um, you had to pay for that person to actually have a uh, soapbox or hyper context account. Um, Looks like they're going to be removing that, so which I think is going to be good for them because it could potentially really extend their reach with this, right? You're going to have a lot mm -hmm. of people looking at this. I mean, I have no idea. It's the, the number of people that have signed up for Firefly's AI, Tyler, 
just because they've seen it in our meeting, what's Firefly's mm -hmm. AI? And we, we tell them about it, right? Uh, and I think that's the same kind of thing with this, but it's really, um, it's really highly functional. And I've looked at a lot of different uh, products like this. Uh, interestingly enough, Zoho Notebook has a plugin, yeah, but it doesn't attach to the meeting. So you're in the meeting, you open mm -hmm. Notebook, and it can suck it in, but I can't get the note attached. I'm trying to figure out what that does. That would that would likely be interesting as well. Yeah, and I guess for audio listeners, maybe we clarify just a little bit with hyper context. Um, it, you know, it's basically a tool that integrates with your calendar, and through a UI, you can set checklist items, you can set agendas, timelines, you can get feedback on meetings. So you know, your team might tell you, "Hey, this was a boring meeting. We didn't need to have this." Right. You kind of gather some of that feedback and action items as you're working through your various calendar events. So if you are the type that kind of lives and dies based on what's on your calendar, um, this might be a great tool to take a look at. Yes, it is. And it just I, I guess for me, one of the biggest things about it is it just really can keep you organized on the meetings that you're doing. I mean, you've got stuff so many different places all over and I, you know, you could do this. In a way, if you're a Zoho Mail user, there's some nice ways you could do it in there. But if you're actually in, um, you know, if you're if you're still Gmail, you're still living in the G Suite, uh, this app is really well worth taking a look at. Uh, like the guys over there, it uh, they're actually up in Toronto. Um, really inexpensive pricing. You know, a person can use it all for themselves for free. Uh, gets a little cheap. You know, five dollars per person per month if you're going to use their base plan. Um, their pro plan, they call it. Um, they've kind of got a starter pack, which gets you five people for $5 total. So for five bucks a month, a dollar per person, you can get going. So if you got a small team you want to hook it up with, it's flat rate pricing and a great product. And I recommend you give it a look. And that brings us to our tip of the week. And this is my second video on Zoho Mail. And this was actually uh, setting up your users in Zoho Mail. And as always, this lives over on our YouTube channel over at uh, youtube.com slash Zanata. So a little five minute and 13 second video on how to set up your users and your groups, manage them inside of Zoho Mail. And uh, we've rearranged our homepage as well. So now we've got all the new videos up top, the most popular videos. Zoho Desk is still in first place with like, I think it's 11,500. He's going to click 12,000 soon. Uh and I think Zoho One is slowly creeping up that, that webinar time. We'll see. We'll see how that horse race goes. But as always, great stuff over here. Search this channel. Um, it, I tell you more and more, I can just send people here. It, as they ask me a question, we've created the video that has the answer to their question. You yeah. know, um, So good job on Wayne, really, on putting super nice, detailed descriptions of all these videos as well, because people are searching it, just general Google searches, and it takes them right to our videos. And good answers for them there. So hopefully you will check us out over there. All right, Tyler, that brings us to some Q and A. What do we got? Yes. Yeah, so we had a couple questions here. I guess I'll start at the top. We kind of mentioned this one quickly as we were going through, do we use Google analytics or Zoho analytics? Um, we do use Google analytics for tracking what's going on on the website, but then I actually pull the Google analytics data into Zoho analytics so that I can report on it in congruence with our CRM data. Um, so you could pull some of the same reports just around web traffic in Google Analytics, but because there's a connector, I just, I'm the type that I like everything in one big house, right? And for me with Zoho Analytics, I can pull everything there. And so that's where I end up doing a lot of the reporting that we wanna do. Um, Scott had a question, are we planning on doing detailed demonstrations of the new Zoho apps, things like Zoho Contracts, Zoho Data Prep, it's not on the list yet. Um, and maybe I could do one on data prep. That might be a good explainer. I think it's a little unclear what that app is really doing. Um, yeah, I think that's more like a probably a series of tutorials, I would say, on data prep. Uh, yeah. My guess is Zoho Contracts will do a full blown getting started, you know. Yeah, it's probably going to need a little time to find its footing. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, with some of these new applications, we'll wait a little bit to start doing content on it because they go through such rapid iteration. Like we'd hate to say in a webinar, oh, you can't do that. And then a month later, they roll out that feature and it works great. Uh, so sometimes we wait just a little bit to kind of make sure that it finds its footing and we get that first round of product updates. 
Um, but I would ex- expect it'll be on our radar. And weren't we going to ask one of our devs to port our existing contract over there? Did we do that? Did we ask Lucas? I don't think we it? started anyone up on it yet. We yeah, tossed the we idea around, to. but we haven't really started. Yeah. So we're going to have one of our devs. Our entire contract is completely automated and handled inside of the CRM using Zoho Writer. Uh, we're going to take that entire thing and port it into Zoho Contracts and see uh, see how that flies, see what we can do with it there. looks pretty interesting. And uh, Troy asks, can you export and import templates from one client to another on a different domain? What were we referring to there? Um, if we're talking about emails, I don't know that emails really export. You can kind of cheat it. If, if you are referring to emails, you can email yourself and then grab the source HTML that you receive and then bring that over to a different instance of Zoho. Uh, but there's no kind of quick and easy way to copy the template from within yeah. the CRM itself. You, you actually, quicker, you have to go into CRM. You don't want to email this to yourself. You want to go in, you want to do edit, you want to go raw HTML, you want to grab that raw you can HTML. pull it from there, yeah. Then go over to the other, well, because then you get all the, the embed fields. Everything stays. Otherwise, you know, the, the other HTML won't have the various embed fields when you get it. Um, yeah. All right. And with and that, Cody, we will wrap up. Oh, well, we had that? one more here from Cody. Um, do we have a good resource for getting started with Zoho People? We did do a webinar maybe four months ago, three, three to five months ago, let's say we did our monthly webinar on Zoho People. I will say it is by no means exhaustive. Um, it's hard to be in, in a one hour webinar with that, but it should give you a decent overview of kind of where everything is and what the different tabs mean. Um, but it's tricky with that app because it gets so granular. The, each layer of menu that you go down, it's even more specific and even more focused on the world of HR, um, which has its own rules and regulations. So it can be a we little tricky, but senior, it might help. It does. And it is super intimidating. And we've got, we have one senior consultant here at Zanata who is an expert on it. Um, she's on sabbatical back, hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, she could, uh, if you need help, I'll uh, get you a quick meeting with her, Cody, and she might be able to point you in the right direction. So anyway, fantastic. And with that, it is a wrap. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or comments, you can head over to Zanata.com. And if you want to check out everything around the CRM Zen show, just go over to Zanata.com slash Zen, and you can see all of our shows and everything related to the CRM Zen show. And on the website is where you'll find those complete episodes as well as show notes with links to the stories we discussed today. As always, you can follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.